Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Hello. 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 Live. <laughs> it's the In Wheel Time car talk show coming up. <laughs> we need to we're, work on that. <laughs> we're going to work on that. Practice. Uh, we do. And uh, so we were going to have a... First of all, Randy Weldon was supposed to be here. We moved him to 9 o'clock to mm-hmm, make room mm-hmm. for the surprise guest, mm-hmm. who we understand has just stood us up. Yeah. So. Yeah, that goes double. What? I, I was going to say, I, at some point in time. You weren't going to say. I, no, I was going to say, I want to talk about my experience with the, the vehicle I'm reviewing this week. I had an interesting well, experience. We've got a, we want, no, but we'll save it for the review. Well, is it, it'll make is the it, review run long. Well, then, okay, well, let's just talk about that right now. Was it a good Do experience it. or a bad experience? It, it was a weird thing. Oh, okay. well, so that, <laughs> he called me. Yeah, I, had to, I called Conrad to ask Conrad if there was some magic. secret handshake magic thing that well, could Hyundai. do. So, so I was, I was showing off the car I was driving. I was showing it off to some Was people. the handshake like this? <laughs> yes. No, it was more like. <laughs> so, uh. So anyway, I was showing it off, and, and so I, I hit the remote start to start it, so they could hear it and all that stuff. The guy was sitting in the in the seat saying, "Oh, this is so nice." You know, he was really digging it and liking it. So I hit the remote start, and we were talking. So he got out, and we finished talking, and I got in it to to leave, and, and I put it in gear. Well, you got to hit the start button. I put it in gear, and the car went stupid. And the car went stupid. What does that mean? Now it means that it it the engine died. There was no alarms, no bells, no whistles or anything like that going on. The radio was still on. Mm-hmm. The lights were still on. The windows would go up and down. Everything worked except the motor. Uh-huh. Mm. And and I couldn't get it to stop. I could push the off button. Nothing I did would get everything to turn off. Nothing. Mm. I hit on star. On star. Hey, I got a problem here, you know. Can you reset me or do something? Uh, that department left three minutes ago. It's 8.03. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's, department. Yeah, so that's when I called Conrad. And I said, Conrad, is there some secret handshake to... to this you must know, be a General Motors car. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, push the, push the brake pedal five times and turn around twice in the driver's seat or some nonsense. Uh, and stick your finger up your nose and yeah, away yeah, it goes. Yeah. Yep, yep. Nothing. So, um, so I called the press fleet manager. She was at her mother's birthday party by Alba. this time. Yeah. You know, and I, she couldn't hear me. She had to go into another room and she said, and they I were told, partying at her mother's. Yeah. And, and I told her, I said, you know, the only thing I know to do is disconnect the battery on this press car, oh, God. but I don't want to do it without telling you. Uh-huh. She said, you want me to call a tow truck? And I said, no, I don't want to call a tow truck. You know, uh, cause they would do the same thing or else they were going to take it. What to the kind of car truck. was this? It was a GM. But but what was it? It was a Tahoe. The Tahoe I'm fixing to review. Oh my God! So so I, I I'm at a buddy's house and I get out and you know he's got no metric tools. So we're trying to find a wrench that'll fit on the battery terminal. <laughs> anyway, long story short, I got the battery disconnected, the negative post because the positive is buried. Mm-hmm. So I pull the negative post off. Comrade said, "Just leave it off a few seconds." And I put it back on. Nothing worked, worked perfect. Just reset everything. Yeah. It didn't lose anything you either. It. It's like playing pinball. You tilted it. Yeah, yeah. So what the you only mean thing, it didn't lose anything? It didn't lose the radio memory or, or oh, any okay. of the driving, the seats. No, Did you know, it remember all, that you screwed up? And, <laughs> and, and and No, it, it let me get in it and start it. I didn't want to try the remote thing again until I got home. And then I tried it. And until if, you, had a real if you do it wrench. right, if you push the button like you're supposed to, it works perfect. But it's almost like Comrade mentioned something about it. it's almost like it went into an anti theft mode. Yeah. You know, that I didn't do it right, so it thought maybe I was trying to steal it. So it wouldn't let me drive it away, but it wouldn't lock the doors or anything like that to keep me from getting no, out. No, because it didn't know that it, there might have been a child in there. Right. You know, so I thought in a way I thought it was pretty smart, but the other ones I've tried that on, you went to put it in gear, you, it just locked you out. I mean, I, everything stopped. But this didn't. I mean, the radio kept blaring and lights were still on and just hmm. like. Well, if you think about it, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it went into some kind of anti-theft mode. Uh, that you default. Know, yeah. One of the first things on um, remote start is always lock the car. That's one of the functions you're supposed yeah, to do is you're always do supposed it. to lock right. the car and then remotely start it. 
So in this case, didn't I guess, that either. yeah, didn't do that. <laughs> so the car went into, uh oh, something's up. Let me go into anti theft. Yeah. And, uh, and shut down, but you can always clear that by pulling a battery case. As long as you got a, 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 12, a 10 millimeter. You have to lock wrench. it with the remote. Mm-hmm. Then, if you want to, the idea is, is that you leave and you come back an hour later and you remote start it, start it, unlock it, open the door, put your foot on the brake, hit the start button because you've got the key in your pocket, yeah, Bob, and all is well. You mm-hmm. know who does that a lot? Kathy does that a lot. She turns it on so the air blows yeah. cold. Oh, yeah. Well, and, and that's kind of what I did because when I got there, I locked it and then I went in We were to uh, for a little while and then when I came back out, I unlocked it and I was showing him you the car. You were at the liquor store, weren't you? <laughs> now I was in the guy's driveway. So, you know, he said, can I sit in it? And I said, sure, you did can he sit work, in did, it. But did he own the liquor store? <laughs> no. I think his cousin does, though. But then, uh, so I hit cousin the remote Vinny. start. So the sequence was right up to that point. You know, I unlocked it started it remotely only you only, Mars. well i it surprised me that it it did that whenever i put it in gear it just normally it just Stop. my truck just stops you just forget it you ain't going to do nothing hmm. so i just thought that was rather interesting the way it's kind of you were pretty frustrated on the phone did i was you, did you happen to look inside the book no there's there's nothing who looks in the inside book. the book there's, there is uh, there's nothing in the book about that because you're supposed to be doing it the right way. You're not supposed to be doing it the way I did it. Well, don't do that. That's what AI told them. Don't do that. Hmm. <laughs> no, actually, it said, you dumb donkey, don't do that. <laughs> dumb uh, donkey. Boy, oh Texas boy. Cadillac dealer is the new owner of a 1966 lowrider known as the Snoop DeVille. All right. Yeah, I think I saw that. The car was customized by rapper Snoop Dogg. And appeared in 50 Cent's 2003 music. 50 Cent. 50 Cent. 50 Cent. Not 50 Cent. The car was customized by rapper Snoop Dogg and appeared in 50 Cent's 2003 music video P.I.M.P. remix. Pimp remix. What's the P period, I period, M period, P period. P.I.M.P. Which means it's probably worse than the word pimp. So what's the Cadillac (laughs) called again? I missed it. Snoop DeVille. Snoop DeVille. Now it's a conversation piece in the newly opened showroom for Frank Kent Cadillac of Arlington, Texas. According to TMZ, the dealership bought the car from previous owner Christian Bonilla, who put it on the market in December for an undisclosed price. Of course. Snoop Dogg had sold it to Bonilla with a blown engine shortly after the 50 Cent video was filmed. Bonilla replaced the engine and upgraded the audio system, but he kept the teal upholstery and three chandeliers that reportedly secured the top interior award at a 2006 General Motors car competition. Three chandeliers. They had to, they had to do brace the roof to hold the weight. Wow. At Snoop DeVille's new home, visitors can admire the car while sipping a selection from the dealership's in-house wine bar called Cadillac Wines. Every Cadillac what dealership a waste needs of, that. What a waste of money. Yeah. Incredible. I thought that you would appreciate all of that. Well, that's mm-hmm. a Jeffrey story. Anything mm-hmm. Cadillac. Mm-hmm. Everything mm-hmm. Cadillac. Everything Cadillac. I got something real quick. Okay. Arkansas man is suing a country club after they refuse to give him the truck they promised him as a hole-in-one. Buckle up, folks. We have a hole-in-one in a car, car controversy Brewing in Arkansas. A hold in one or a hole? A hole in one. Hole in one. Car controversy brewing in Arkansas. Uh, long time ago, a Conway, Conway, Arkansas man by the name of Austin Glaggett filed a lawsuit against the Mor- Moralton Country Club. Gaggett played in the country club's tournament His of the century. His name is Gaggett. No, Claggett. Oh, Claggett. C-L-A-G-E-T-T, Claggett. This is Arkansas. Get your accent right. (laughs) Tournament of the Century. On Saturday, a three-person scramble format and the buy-in of $375 for the folks to go play before the tournament. Uh, The Morilton Morilton Country Club promoted a 2022 Ford F-150 4x4 Super Crew as a prize for the first person to hit a hole-in-one on the course's 10th hole. The truck had a sticker of 53.5 and uh, was allegedly donated by the Ford dealership. And uh, so far, so good. But there's a problem because, against all odds, the guy hit the hole in one. 
on the 10th hole. According to reports, it was a good, clean ace. Everybody saw it. It didn't happen on a provisional dropping a ball or anything like that. It didn't happen out of a turn. So everything was legit. Letter of the law. So when Claggett went to claim his new ride after the round, however, uh, Moralton Country Club wouldn't turn over the keys. Claggett's lawyer said that uh, the statement on behalf of the client is that he did make it legitimately. i got to turn the page, guys. Sorry. Uh, and the dealership they was accused of crawfish, crawfishing, walking backwards, sideways. In Arkansas, that's how you know someone means the business. Jay Hodge Ford, Conrad's doing it right now, says that they were unable to secure the necessary insurance for the vehicle in time because they believe the vehicle was for display purposes only. So in other words, put it out there. they shouldn't have put it out there. They shouldn't have promoted it. The guy won it, and they weren't going to give it to him. Yeah, I've done golf tournaments before and played in them where there's a hole-in-one car, but also yeah. organized a couple of them with a hole-in-one car. And that hole-in-one insurance is all calculated based on how many players you have, how far is the hole, you know, a lot of other mm-hmm. uh, metrics to come up with, you know, maybe three hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars insurance for a hole-in-one car. You know, you got to think golf tournaments around the country, you know, tens of thousands of them have a hole-in-one car in them, so. The insurance companies are making a killing selling hole-in-one insurance. They should pay out. Mm-hmm. Well, Now, the, if the dealership didn't finalize the contract with the insurance company in time or correctly, that's their responsibility. I well, they should it, pay it, out. it comes down to who had the contract. Did the country club have the contract with the dealership who was supposed to get that insurance, or was the country club? Because the ones that, we, that I've worked on, the, the tournament people got the insurance for that same thing it's just the dealership didn't do it the 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 group that was organizing the tournament we had to do that yeah I think, i've seen it where the dealership gets the contract with the i don't think it makes company. any difference as long as there's insurance on the car yeah. by somebody yeah. well i well, think no, it's, it's, it's not <clears throat> go ahead it's not insurance on the car it's insurance to pay get for it the car i i understand but yeah, as long okay. as there's insurance it shouldn't make any difference who has the contract Either the country club, somebody needs the to dealership, pay or the organizer. Well, I agree. Well, somebody if, needs to pay. But if the dealership's saying they didn't have time to get the insurance, that's telling you there is That's no on the world. dealership. Well, and, and in this case, I think the dealership went into it as a display. The country club promoted it without the dealership knowing it. I think well, there was a little bit of But the dealership not gave them the vehicle to, to put out promotion. on the hall. That's yeah. where the lawyers get involved. Yeah, and, and, that's and, and the only said, people who said, make money are the attorneys. That's and right. And, and this, guy, this guy will probably end up getting his truck. And the guy with the sells a crawfish too but it may be uh an old model by the time well, this is an old well, story yeah, this yeah, is an yeah. old story too it's arkansas it takes a while to get it down here out mm-hmm. of the mountains <sighs> yeah i got relatives up there i can say that yeah. what do you call 32 straight white teeth in arkansas a beauty a pageant, reunion. A beauty pageant. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone in arkansas you send your uh it's conrad it's Conrad, eight, no, six, no, seven, no, five, no, two, no, oh, nine. no, better yet, send it to info at in real time so we can all share yeah. all that story. Because if you send it to Conrad, he'll, he'll just never delete see it. it. He, yeah, right. he'll never read it. <laughs> we call our toll free line one eight seven six five three zero nine. Kind of getting old. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot. There is a lot of uh, Tesla electric vehicle news yes sir is shocking uh tesla has stepped up its u.s sales incentives to move new inventory at of its high-end model s sedan and model x crossover with discounts reaching seventy five hundred dollars plus free use of its supercharging network for three years according to the company's website additional perk of three years of free supercharging on Tesla's extensive network is potentially worth a few thousand dollars. Say, that's a good deal. Depending on charging frequency, the free charging also comes for non-inventory Model S and Model X vehicles ordered on the website for June delivery. Well, you better hurry up. The EV maker is also offering discounts and inventory of the Model 3 for buyers who take delivery before June 30, according to its website. Tesla added three months of free supercharging for inventory Model 3s last week. Um, enough of that. Elon needs more money for his fight Rivian, with Zuckerberg. Rivian Automotive has reached an agreement to access Tesla's supercharger network starting next year to incorporate the charging port design into its future electric vehicles. 
Rivian said it will provide a charging adapter as early as spring of 24 for its current vehicles next year so they can access the 12,000 superchargers contemplated in the deal. Ford is again increasing the price of some models of its F-150 Lightning electric Uh-oh. pickup, with the base model now starting at 61869 including shipping, up about 50% over the initial starting price when the trunk l- truck launched in April 2022. It's good advertising at 42. The price mm-hmm. hikes come as the automaker reopens retail order banks for current reservation holders, resumes vehicle shipments, and returns to full production at its Rouge Electric Vehicle Center following a February battery fire. So I wonder if people who got the uh, the pre-orders in, are they still going to have the price that they had when they, they ordered it? They should have it. Or are they going to crawfish on that? Well, it, who knows? Um, back to the electric thing for a okay. second. Hyundai will consider making its vehicles more readily compatible with Tesla. Pushing for in North America, the South Korean automaker CEO said on Tuesday. So everybody's climbing on board, and that will no longer be a news story before long because everybody's going to go yeah. to the Tesla charging mode. Well, because there's one more t- Tesla stations out there than anything Correct. else. And that's why. Mm-hmm. And because this two charger plug thing is way too much. It's kind of like Betamax and VHS. What happened to Betamax? Because everybody went to VHS. Mm-hmm. Well, and Elon's going to make billions on it because wasn't the deal that, three billion? I yeah. think is the estimate. The deal with GM, mm-hmm. GM, um, Ford, Rivian. Remember everybody. Carlos Gosen? Yeah, what yeah. a guy! Yeah. He's a bag man. Former Nissan Motor Company chairman Carlos Gosen sued the automaker for more than one billion dollars in a lawsuit filed to Lebanon's public prosecutor. He's got cojones. Uh The lawsuit accuses Nissan, along with two other companies and 12 named individuals of crimes, including defamation, slander, and libel, and fabricating material evidence. Gosen, once a leading light of the global car industry, was arrested in Japan in late 2018 and charged with financial misconduct. He denied the charge and said his detection was part of a plot by Nissan executives to block a merger with alliance partner Renault which Gosen also led. Gosen fled to Lebanon, his childhood home, in late 2019, hidden in a box <laughs> aboard a private jet. He said he was escaping a rigged justice system mm. in Japan. Mm-mm-mm. All right. He knows he didn't come to the U.S. either. Uh, no, because in Lebanon, they don't have an extradition yeah. treaty with anybody. Come on in. Well, if he wants his money, you have to come come get it. Get them out of Lebanon, and then they can well, so, throw them in the uh, clink. We'll see if that happens. Uh, at any rate, I just thought that uh, you would enjoy those stories. Uh, time now for Conrad's Car Clinic. Yep. So why don't we go ahead and do the car clinic, because we know that it usually takes you longer than the allotted time. So I'm going to allow for that right now. Well, Aren't you, you, know, aren't you, you thankful? Would, thank, thank you. Thank you. Well, you were talking about, uh, you know, let's keep it, you know, kind of technical on the vehicles themselves. Yes. So this week we're going to talk about exhaust manifolds. Okay. You know, an engine, a gasoline or diesel engine is basically an air pump. How much air can you get in and how much air can you get out and how loud is the bang in the middle to push the piston down to create power? So one of the cheapest ways to make more power is improving the airflow of the exhaust system. Hence, that's why so many hot rodders put headers on car. The first one here is what's called the Chevrolet Ram Horn. Very popular exhaust manifold was used on millions of Chevrolets through the years, from the early 60s all the way through the mid-70s. Oh, yeah. So, you know, very, very popular, but not good flow. So that's why you see so many people throw headers on a small block Chevy and really increase the power It's free it. power is what it is. It, it's ultimately free power. Didn't uh, Beerman sell? Didn't he get his start selling headers? No, not somebody? start, but uh, he made a fortune on them. Yeah. Headman headers. Head, was it Headman? Headman. I thought it was Doug, but either nope. way. Uh, Headman headers, and uh, just to interrupt and just say this, that I'll never forget the first time I went to his house. He says, come on in. A regular three-bedroom, single-story house, right? Over in the Meadows, Meadows Place now. I walk in. In every room, you walk in, the dining room's to the right. Every single room in this house is floor-to-ceiling, wall-to-wall headers stacked <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> For every make and model of car that you could possibly do. Because he great. was shipping them out. And so, and he ran a little bitty 
box ad, like a, a one and a half inch by one inch box ad in the back of Car Craft and Hot Rod and, and all the car magazines. And it was, I think it was forty nine or fifty nine ninety five for a set of headers for your car. That's cheap. Shipped to you. Lifetime guarantee. Boom. He would get one delivery, 18-wheeler, of headers one day. And later on in the afternoon, the truck would come to pick up the end-of-the-day orders and fill up the truck with headers. So he was just moving them in and out of his house all day long. Smart guy. Uh-huh. So, anyway. you know, manufacturers recognize this free horsepower available to them. So they started building their own exhaust manifold that had a, a header-like look. So if you kind of look at the next one. Mm-hmm. But they're cast iron. They're, they're yeah, ca- they in most cases, they're cast iron. Now they're actually doing uh, tubes. This one was for the Max Wedge. You know, you can see even in cast iron, that's pretty complex casting there yep. that uh, created the header look. Um, of cast iron, um, and, and through the years, different different manufacturers did it. Kind of the next one out after the uh, um, after the Max Wedge was Pontiac and their Super Duty. You got to remember Pontiac Super Duty started as a 421 uh, back in the early 60s and evolved into the Ram Air uh, of the early 70s and stuff. So again, it has that that long tube look. And that length of that tube was worked on by the engineers to create the most power, as well as the way that it scavenged where it came together at the at the connection where all four of the tubes came together. That was an important part of the design of the header or the exhaust manifold. And then Mopar again did it with the street hemi with clearly what looks to be headers yeah. on the street hemi. And you got to think that was cast iron, uh, pretty heavy. But you know, it took a it took some work to create that casting to do that, but very creative. And they would glow a brilliant orange mm-hmm. when you really when, got when that you were yeah, really glowing. banging on them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then what? you know, Carol Shelby building hot rod cars, he recognized the importance of it, and he had his own exhaust manifolds that were cast for the. You know, you got to remember he had a two eighty nine that was putting out what three hundred and five horsepower at the time. Well, a big chunk of that was the uh, the exhaust system on the vehicle as well as the carburetor and the tune. But, uh, you know, just how much power can you create just by changing the exhaust manifolds to uh, to a better flowing exhaust manifold? 10 to 20 horsepower was, usually? was pretty significant, mm-hmm. yeah, in the day. So that would have been the small block, and then Ford said, hey, I can beat that. And then they built these headers for the 428 Super Cobra Jets. Again, some of these are pretty rare to find and very expensive to find originals. So, again, you can see that they're trying to create that exhaust flow to get the air out of the engine. Next week, we're going to talk about intake manifolds and getting air into the engine. And then, you know, finally today, you know, everybody says, you know, put an LS in it and tub it out. Or Jeff says, put an LS in it and tub it out. So, this is what the exhaust manifold looks like on the LS2 Chevrolet uh, engines. What does it look like on my Corvette? Because I can't see it. Probably not too far from this, but yours is an LS1, so yeah. it might have been a little bit Different shorter runners. But I thought yeah. you had headers on there. No. Huh. No, but, it has a Corsa catback exhaust. Anyway, go but, ahead. But you can see in this, you know, there was quite a bit of work put together to create that flow range to get the air out of the inside of the engine. And you want them to be long, you want them to be smooth, and you don't want a lot of really sharp bends in them. So, uh, you know, all the manufacturers recognized, as the hot rodders did, that a set of headers that look like this uh, are pretty important. So they were building basically cast iron headers for, in production. So so why did the factory, once they realized this, why, what was the advantage of staying with cast iron versus building a, a header? Well, not, header just, that, right after not just that, but why didn't oh, they all change it to a scavenging header like right. the late model LS well, motor? Because the cast iron's cheaper than welding together tubes. Seriously? Yeah, manpower. Just just in manpower. Labor? Yeah. You know, you could, I'll be darned. You know, once you had the sand casting, you could build, you know, thousands of exhaust manifolds where a header requires somebody to get in there and take it together and, and piece it together. That was the first it. thing I did on my Corvette, put a set of headers on it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what they were. I and and it'll wake the car up. Yeah. You know, definitely will wake the car mm-hmm. up. My my Oldsmobile's got headers on it. Wonder what the uh, wonder what the number one header maker seller is. 
hooker. these days. I would think hooker? hooker. Yeah, that's what I would think. Hooker would headers? Be hooker, yeah. That's what I would think. Hooker, Headman, Doug Thorley. Headman, uh, he, yeah, Headman's good. Headman's Thorley's not. Thorley may be good, but he, I don't. Volume wise, I don't, no, no. I would say volume wise would be Hooker. I think Edelbrock think. makes well, headers. Now. When we watch the NHRA races this afternoon, look on the side of the car because it's either going to be Headman or on, that doesn't or mean anything. Uh, that's just sponsorship. Means who gives them money. That means, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Run the sticker. We'll give you some money if you win. <laughs> yeah, but but again, you know, it's easy horsepower. By getting the air out of the engine. Next weekend, we're going to talk about getting the and air out of the engine. And there's also a possibility, if you keep your foot out of it, of getting a little bit better gas mileage. Yeah, well, because that's it not flows why you everything. Put, yeah, that's not why you put headers on it. You put of it because you want power so to get intake, bang on it. We talk about port and polish. Now, yeah, I'm not really going to talk about port and polish. There's an aspect of that, and that is when you put two pieces of metal together, you want that air flow to be smooth over that mating surface. Right. So porting is making sure that mating surface is exactly the same as the two pieces of right. metal going together and exactly. polishing is polishing, smoothing yeah. it out so it's not it's not a rough surface to create a uh, boundary layer air turbulence. Perfect. Okay. Um I did have one yeah, am I I don't have time to read all of this. I'm going to read this Candace separately. is Candace is watching. Is she? So be nice. Is she, is she is she reading her text messages? I hope so. <laughs> oh, she texted me back. Let's see. I gave her a hard time. You, blank, you may not be able to read her yeah, thing. Blank, I, I don't blank, think blank, you want to. Blank. She says, uh, sorry, buddy. I sure tried. You didn't even call or text. No, because I didn't know this was going to happen. It was a surprise. Uh, it was a surprise. surprise. Mars kept it a secret. All right, moving it's on. It's all Mars's fault. Always is. It is, yep. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, we're, and we're all of his wives. Okay. Oh, Aren't we, gosh. Mars? Oh, yeah. In kind of a sick way. All righty. All right. Quick break now. You're on the End Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Everyone at the Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy. Thank you for participating in the best cruise in around and look forward to seeing you again. You'll hear about the next cruise in date right here on End Wheel Time. Next time you're in the West Houston Energy Corridor area, be sure and stop in at the original Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex at I-10 and Highway 6 or the Katy location on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard. When passing through Beaumont or College Station, stop in and have Loopy's award-winning beef fajitas and frozen margaritas. There's always a celebration at Loopy Tortilla. Loopy Tortilla founder Stan Holt and his wife Sheila are winning racers on the NHRA drag racing circuit and have a collection of hot rods and classics that everyone appreciates. Look for them at the next Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise In. The date will be announced soon and will once again be held at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex on 99 and Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. We'll give you all the details right here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk show and online donations benefit god's garage we'll see you then you own a car you love well why not let gulf coast auto shield protect it houstonian john gray invites you to his state-of-the-art facility to introduce you to his specialist team of auto enthusiasts we promise you'll be impressed whether you're looking to massage your original paint to a like new appearance apply a ceramic coating install a paint protection film Nano ceramic window tent or new windshield protection called ExoShield, Gulf Coast Auto Shield is where Houston's car people go. Curbed your wheels? Instead of buying new, why not have them repaired? How about a professionally installed radar detector? Gulf Coast Auto Shield does that too. Get a peek inside the shop and look at the services offered by getting online and heading to GCAutoShield.com. Better yet, stop by their facility at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway, and get a personal tour. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your place to go for all things exterior. Call them today, 832-930-5655 or GCAutoShield.com. The award-winning In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available on the most popular podcast channels out there in 30-minute episodes. We realize our three-hour live show can be difficult to catch in its entirety, so now you can listen every day to a convenient, fresh 30-minute episode. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Audible, along with a dozen more. In Wheel Time has the most informative automotive guest interviews and new car reviews, along with popular features including Conrad's Car Clinic and This Week in Auto History, along with automotive news headlines. Our live broadcast airs every Saturday, 8 to 11 Central, on InWheelTime.com, the iHeart app, and on YouTube. Be sure to say hello when we're broadcasting from the Tailpipes and Tacos Cruise in, Autorama, and the Houston Auto Show, among others. Now, it's easier than ever to hear about all things automotive all week long. You're invited to join fellow car enthusiasts in becoming part of the ever-growing In Wheel Time Car Talk family. Don't forget those 30-minute podcast episodes on your favorite podcast channel.
That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.